specific ways, but I'm going to tell you um, um, some kind of uh, overall general ways of how you can teach culture. So no matter what kind of English curriculum you get in the future, you will be able to incorporate cu uh, culture into um, that English uh, curriculum. I, I gave a handout, but I didn't have time to make a handout, so um, anyway, if you really want to know the 12 guidelines for teaching culture, send me an email and I will, I will send you those 12 gui guidelines. But basically, there are um, four parts you need to make sure you focus on when you teach culture in your classrooms, and that's uh, knowing about, knowing how, knowing why, and knowing oneself. And whenever you teach uh, about any cultural element, uh, you need to make sure you focus on each of those. And I'll tell you what I mean by uh, these terms later in the, in the talk. And also you need to make cultural, uh, uh, you need to make, um, you need to be very explicit in your, uh, in your teaching of uh, culture. I'll tell you a little bit how you can, you can, um, you can do that in your language classrooms. So uh, first, um, actually, I want to go to the, the other one. Let me, let me go to knowing about first. Um, well, what I mean about knowing about, and, and that means I'm just talking about knowing about a culture. Um, you need to talk about uh, the different concepts of culture, cultural learning, and personal experiences. That's what the content can be. And what I just mean is, um, I, I think we're all familiar with this kind of cultural knowledge. You just tell students about the culture. You just teach it to them and say, for example, in the United States, they eat a lot of cheese, you know? So you're just telling some cultural element, right? And it's telling about. So then the students will know about uh, the culture. And um, you have to make sure the students can comprehend that and that they know what you're talking about. Somehow you have to do some kind of information check to see, do your students really understand the cultural elements that you've, you've told them? And you can do this through different, many different ways. You don't have to just lecture to them. You can tell them some experience that you've had or other experiences or you can have some kind of teaching materials or you can have authentic materials from the culture like you know anything from the culture is authentic materials that you can use to teach them some kind of a, a cultural uh, element but you're just teaching them about the culture okay just teaching them about it and your role as a teacher is a source you have to find the material by yourself, right? And you are a resource. So if the students have questions, you have to be their resource. And uh, aperture and uh, elicitor is just, uh, you know, you're just trying to get them to answer, asking questions and listening back and forth. So that, that's what the first step is uh, knowing about. You teach the students about the, about the culture. And one example, I have a very easy example for you. It's like you have a picture or a photograph, and there is some social scene from the culture with lots of details. For example, you have a big picture of a birthday party, or a big picture of people opening gifts at Christmas, or you have um, uh, a social gathering, like people together, or kids playing. You know, you have a very detailed picture with lots of stuff in it, and you, you tell the you, you you tell the students what's going on, and you ask them questions like, "What do you see?" You know, and see if the students can give you some feedback. You know, tell you something that they see, and you help to guide them in the direction of whatever cultural uh, objective that you have in your class uh, that day. And that helps you to that helps you to um, be able to, uh, like I said, teach them uh, about the culture. But then the next step that you need to go to is uh, knowing how. Knowing how. And um, what I mean by knowing how, I mean first step is teaching them about that cultural thing. Then you have to teach them how to behave in this way, right? You need to teach them what is uh, culturally appropriate, how to behave, how to do this uh, cultural thing. And you can do that through language. They need to know how. They need to be able to speak the language, whatever is culturally appropriate at that time. Uh, also, they need to know the culture. What is culturally appropriate behavior? 
um, for that kind of situation, just like any of those example pictures I told you uh, before. And what is the outcome? You need to be able to see if the students can behave in a culturally, culturally appropriate way. If they can behave in the way that you are trying to uh, uh, teach them to behave. If they can do it, for example, if they can say, you know, greet someone by saying, hey, what's up, you know, and use the facial expression, the correct facial expression, then they're doing it correctly. They've learned how. But if they're, hi, what's up? You know, and then they're just looking down, it's not, they're not learning how, right? That's not even being shy. That's just not learning how. Or just even if you taught them about birthday parties and you had a birthday party in the class, then you would have to make sure that the students are behaving in a culturally appropriate way. If you're trying to teach them American cultural, um, what a, an American birth, birthday party is like, oh, somebody got a message. If, uh, uh, what, a, what is uh, American, uh, what is appropriate in American uh, birthday party, then you have to have the birthday party, show them how to behave, and make sure the students are behaving in that way. Otherwise, then what's the point? How are you going to teach them culture? Um, and you can do it in many different ways. Operations, what I mean by operations is you can take anything from the culture and let them do something. Okay, they can do something like they can make some food from the culture, they can play some game. Uh, they're doing some kind of operation, they're making something. Uh, ritual is things like exchanging gifts at Christmas or coloring Easter eggs. Something that they need to uh, do that is from the culture. Uh, dialogues, everybody knows dialogues, right? You know, you have the students interact uh, in appropriate uh, dialogue. Role plays, performances, drama, simulations. Field experience means taking them into the culture. So maybe that's hard to do in Taiwan because we're not living in the United States, right? But maybe you guys, some foreign friends, you can just take them around the foreign friends, who knows, or ask them to come to the class. Um, also, what your role is, is a model and a coach. So if you want to teach someone how to do something, first you have to model the behavior for the students. Then you let the students try and you have to coach them and tell them, no, not like this. Try to do this, this way. Yeah. And I'm not giving you specific examples, but I think you guys, because I don't think it's beneficial, but maybe in the future when you're teaching, you take your own material and then you can uh, make sure you focus on how in this way. But I have one little example in, and I have like, you have a short dialogue that has like verbal language and nonverbal language, and you sh and you show it to the students, and then you you show them what the person the way you should behave verbally, like what language you should use, and then nonverbally, maybe if you have facial expressions or something like that, and then you let the students practice with each other, like being excited. You know what is it? What is it? mean to be excited in, you know, is the facial expression for excited different in Taiwanese culture than American culture, or some uh, gestures or body language, you, first you need to do it and then uh, let the students try. And I think the students will have a lot of fun with this, especially if they can make a lot of uh, weird faces or something like that. So um, let's on to the next step. <laughs> Knowing why. The next step we have to do is we cannot only just tell the students uh, how, um, about a certain cultural element and then tell them um, how to behave appropriately. We also have to tell them why. You can't just say, oh, Americans like to eat cheese, uh, a cheese sandwich. And then maybe we show them how to eat a cheese, make a cheese sandwich, right? And then they eat the cheese sandwich, but Maybe the students will want to know why. Why do, why do Americans eat a lot of cheese? Or why do Americans open gifts at Christmas? Why do they color Easter eggs? Why do they like to wear t-shirts? Why do, you know, different things? It's your responsibility if you don't know. You're, as a teacher, you have to find out why. Because you have to tell the students. You can't just say, because. Yeah, because they're young, they're going to say why. So you have to make sure that you, um, um, you're able to explain. And you have to, you have to be careful because you cannot just be stereotypical either. At the same time, you cannot be stereotypical um, in your explanations of why. You can't just say, oh, because of blah, blah, blah. 
you know, you have to really do the research and try to find out, and it's difficult sometimes um, because you are an outsider looking into that culture. But you can do it. Uh, you have to be unbiased. Try to be unbiased and uh, um, and find out and give this. Make sure the students don't judge either when you when you tell them why. Um, yeah, and the outcomes. Just make sure that the students understand why and not not be biased. Uh, in those uh, assumptions. And let's see, learning activities. Well, you can have students, if they're old enough, I mean, and they have access, they can try to find information on their own, or you can make books or materials available to them and let them search, you know, even if it, and it doesn't always, of course, have to be in English. They can do these things. We're talking about learning culture, not always about the language. They can also sometimes learn the culture part and they can be explained in Chinese and then later they can uh, pick up the um, the English. And your role in, in this part is the guide and the re co-researcher. So you can also discover the things with the students. Because maybe you have a textbook and it teaches about a certain holiday or some, some very insignificant thing, but then you don't really know yourself. So not only are you going to uh, teach your students, but you will also be a researcher too with the students because you will find the information together and then you will learn and then you'll be able to pass that information on to your students. And uh, one example is just like that picture I told you about before. Um, you can just ask, start, you can keep going with that and just point to the picture and try to ask the students to, uh, if they can guess, why do you think they do this? You know, you have to prompt the students and try to see if they can give you some responses. Maybe, I don't know, I think that maybe uh, young kids will be more energetic to shout out some answers than college students. Is that true? How are students in elementary school in Taiwan? Are they quiet and don't say anything? I don't believe so. Every time I went to the elementary school, they're jumping around like monkeys. <laughs> so I think that, I think they will be really happy to shout out some reasons even if those reasons are incorrect. And, um, but you can do that and try to explain to them why, but don't always just supply the answer to the student because otherwise they won't build up their cognitive skills of trying to you know, figure things out on their own. They will just a sponge to suck in the information and then later it will just fall out, right? But it, it needs to, to work around a little bit to stay in there. Uh, and the last part is like, Knowing oneself is self-reflection, and it's mostly dealing with comparing your own culture to the target culture. So um, you need to be able to find out, oh, uh, they do this in the United States, but uh, what do we do in Taiwan? Uh, how is it different? Why do they do this in the United States, but then we do this in Taiwan? Is it because of our culture, where the, the place we live, or some other thing like that? And then you can explain that to the students. Give them some comparison and have them, um, you know, you know, have them be, you know, are you falling asleep? Too cold? I'm burning up. I'm on fire. <laughs> you can come stand here and you'll feel the heat. So, um, so anyway, and, and for these activities, you can just try to get the students more to, to talk with each other. And this, of course, can be, can be in Chinese. And... One example here is back to the picture, if you have that social scene again, and um, you can even share with the students uh, beforehand, you know, your own experience. If you have had experience in other cultures or with people from other cultures, and then you can compare, oh, yeah, we do this in Taiwan and we do this in the United States. Just make sure that the main thing that I'm trying to get across to you, you can't just tell them about a culture and then not tell them any reasons why or teach them how to uh, do this behavior or experience this. Because uh, sometimes students will learn by doing or asking questions. And some students don't just learn by listening, of course. There's so many different ways to learn. So you have to, you have to try other ways so you can reach all of your students. And I have one example. Don't try to read this. There's so much, so much information here. Uh, one example I got was, um, this was a Japanese teacher, and uh, she is trying to uh, teach, um, this would be too hard for elementary school, but anyway, she is trying to teach the different greeting styles and introduction styles between Japanese and 
um, and English. So in the about section, the teacher, first of all, talked about the different types of handshakes, handshakes that exist right in um, American culture. And then after that, she, she explained that some handshakes are appropriate and some are inappropriate. And also talked about eye contact when you greet someone. And then the appropriate time for, an in, for a handshake and an introduction. Okay, this is the point when you need to stick your hand out and, and shake. Not before, not after. And then also talked about small talk. Maybe explain to the students what is small talk and why it's important. And then uh, the appropriate and inappropriate small talk questions. What you can ask and cannot ask during small talk. And then the last part is, what happens if someone asks you an inappropriate small talk question? And then uh, what will you do? Um, so first, the, the teacher uh, presented this information, you know, just talked to the students. Then the students uh, started taking over because the students then tried shaking hands in a variety of different ways. They, tried, they learned how at this point. And um, they learned what was the difference between a comfortable and uncomfortable handshake. So the teacher demonstrated and then let them practice with each other. Uh, after that, um, they learned how to do, uh, they learned how to make a natural, appropriate self-introduction in English. So the teacher first taught and then let them learn how. And the, after that, they tried to initiate a conversation with small talk with a stranger. So the, the students, of course, are not strangers, but they pretended they were strangers and um, initiated small talk. And then uh, they tried to do the small talk interaction, North American style, and then they had um, a practice with appropriate and inappropriate questions. So first they learned the cultural, about that, that part of the culture, then they learned how to perform. Then the teachers started exploring why with the students. So why do you think Americans do this? And uh, why do you think some things would be considered polite and why other things would not be polite? And, and then it explained that and explain the value why Americans shake hands. Where did it come from and how did it, did it start? And then the last part is self-reflection because then the um, the students started to uh, reflect on what do we have in our own culture that is similar to what they do in American culture and why do we do what we do in our culture and why do they do what they do in American culture? Is it very different or is the reasoning the same or not? So can you see how you can take anything? You can take anything. It doesn't have to be handshakes. You can take any kind of interaction, even a game, you know, like a, a, a typical American game that children play. And you can do all of these things uh, to make sure that you touch on each of the different knowings of culture. Understand? You can try it. So like what I, what I said before, the example of the handshake and greeting, of course, won't be appropriate for young learners, but there is all, all different um, types of, uh, all, all kinds of different activities um, or cultural things that, that takes place in American culture that you can just pick one that is um, age appropriate and then teach, teach that part of culture, of the culture, and um, make sure you touch on each of those um, on those learnings. And um, just make sure that you remember that you can just take whatever you're responsible to teach, whatever your curriculum is, whatever the school gives you, and you can incorporate the cultural element. Your, your teaching doesn't have to be dry, dry and boring. It doesn't have to be dry and boring in lecture like this all the time. Actually, when I gave the other talk, this is when I gave a 15 minute break, but you're not getting any 15 minute break. Too bad. So I'm going to talk to you about some activities, give you some sample activities, um, and the way you can incorporate culture. It's so hot. Um, the first is, this is called everyday tasks. And basically what you do is you take a task, any kind of task, uh, and have the students do it. Make sure it's a culturally related task. And I've already got the, this is like a lesson plan that you could teach in your class. 
And basically what you do is you put all the students in a semicircle and uh, so they all can uh, see and you need to prepare a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in front of the class. You make the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know, spread the peanut butter, spread the jelly, and cut the crust, and cut it in the middle, make two slices, and show them. And then you can explain about, you can focus on the about, right? Because you can tell them, this is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They, we, uh, Americans often eat peanut butter, you know? Uh, students often take peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to school. Uh, sometimes they will share uh, part of their sandwich with a classmate is appropriate to share. It's okay to share. They'll also have milk and maybe fruit. Uh, sometimes peanut butter and jelly is a snack that mothers give children when they come home from school. Um, you know, you can read up on peanut butter. It's a very American thing. And um, then you can prepare the sandwich and you can describe the steps. Uh, you can focus, if you're focusing on some kind of grammar in your textbook, like it could be uh, transitional phrases, it could be verbs, it could be past tense, grammar, past tense or present tense. You can practice that by when you're doing the, making the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, I am cutting the bread, you know, present progressive, you know. I, you know, I, I cut the sandwich, you know, past tense, you know, whatever, you know, it, just however much that you want to focus on. And then after you, after you do everything, you can ask students to uh, do a variety of things. You can ask them to tell what you did, or you can have other students make the sandwich. And, and while the student is doing one part, you can ask the students, what is he doing, you know? And then they have to answer, answer you. And I think students will feel it's wild and crazy to be doing something like this in a class. And they don't even know they're learning something, but they are learning. Right, because some students are kinesthetic and tactile learners. They have to touch or they have to do something in order to learn. So it's one way to to get those other learners. Oh, I wish. <laughs> um, and you can also ask them. Uh, you can ask them to discuss. Of course, you have to touch on the other the other uh, knowings. You have to tell them a why and do they have a similar snack. In their culture, they like to to have um, that kind of thing. And just like I said, you can also let other students um, uh, do the activity. You know, make the sandwich, and uh, or you can have other students tell. You can even have one student say, "Okay, now you need to tell me what. Tell me, I'm the teacher. Tell me what to do first. And if the students miss some step and do something wrong, then it will be very funny. And you just do what they tell you to do." If they say spread the peanut butter and then, but they don't tell you where to spread it, you just spread it on the table, you know, and they will feel shocked. And then you just say, oh, you didn't tell me to spread it on the bread. And then they, ha and then you can ask them, and then they will say it again and say it correctly. And the students will think it's hilarious and very funny. Uh, here's another, here's another activity, is uh, called uh, handy language. And what you can do is you can just uh, take pictures of uh, people doing different gestures. Um, like for example, do you know what this gesture means? Okay, too bad. Do some homework. Okay, so you can have uh, pictures of people doing different gestures. And um, you can um, ask the students, uh, give them the handout and say, what is the picture? What is it? What is the? What does it mean? What do each of these picture, these gestures mean? And uh, you can let them guess, and then uh, rap, and then you can, if they don't get the right answer, then you can uh, give them the right answer, and you can uh, compare the gestures that, that we have in uh, Taiwan to that in the United States, and um, you can let the students practice those, uh, practice those gestures in the class. Okay. Another good way is if you can find films. Uh, if you go on online, you guys know YouTube.com. YouTube. If you go here, okay. 
This is a website where people can, where people post their own home movies. And they're usually very short clips, like 30 second clips. And you can see people from the States uh, doing some kind of wild stuff. And they're, it's really weird and crazy stuff. Uh, anything is there. Don't send your students there. Go there yourself. Uh, otherwise, they will see some bad stuff. But there's some good stuff there, too. And if you go through the, the bad to get to the good. And you can find people making certain gestures or talking certain ways. And you can see weird facial expressions. And you can play those clips to the students and ask them, um, what's this face mean? Do you think she's angry? She's sad? Upset? And how can we tell by the face? And you can play it with the sound and without the sound and different things. You can find all kinds of video clips. Or you can use movies. You can find a small clip from a movie where someone is acting in a certain way and do that. But I think getting stuff from YouTube is really uh, very cool because it's authentic material. And you see people doing behavior very widely, wildly and um, you know, just like normally in the culture. And sometimes a movie is fake. You know, right? It's not always real. Mm. And you can even, uh, well, not with elementary school, but if you have very, very uh, older and mature learners, you can also tell them about rude gestures as well. You know, like sticking your middle finger, finger up in the air or other things like that. Uh, another activity is if you want to do a review. A review, what you can do is make a game piece. Actually, I'll show you the handout I made, um, made later. You make a game board and you put different questions and you have a die, uh, a die. you don't want to die like a dice, but just one. And you have the students play a game where they have to go to different spots and each spot on the game board has different questions and they have to answer the question. Like, for example, you could say, um, what is a, just like with the peanut butter thing I mentioned earlier, you could ask, what is, what is a common snack in the United States? And if the students can name a common stat, snack from the United States, it shows that they've gained some American culture. Then they can stay at that spot. Or other things, it could be anything. What is a common greeting uh, in the United States? Hi. How are you, you know? Just, but it will be fun because it's a review and the students think they're just playing a game, but it's reinforcing what you've already, um, you've already taught them about American culture. And I'll show you the game, the game uh, board that I, that I got from a book later on. <laughs> yeah, nothing else to tell you there. Uh, don't want to, yeah, I don't want to talk about that one. I want to talk about this one. Another thing is really cool is about greetings. And um, just to teach uh, students that, you know, if you greet people in different ways across different cultures, you can do this activity. And what you can do is try to get some kind of uh, um, video clips. You can try YouTube or other places. And you can get people from different cultures greeting, like the Maoris from New Zealand, they will rub noses with each other when they meet, they meet one another. Or how Japanese bow, or Koreans bow in another way, or Thai people will put their you know, hands together, right? And bow a little bit. So you can have different people from, excuse me, different cultures, and if you can, or you can even videotape examples if you don't have people from those cultures doing it, you can just get your friends to, you know, do some actions for you. And then you can play the different, the different examples to the students. And it will make them culturally aware, not only of American culture, but other cultures like, oh, everybody doesn't always uh, greet each other in the same way. And then uh, you can have the students practice Excuse me. You can have the students practice in all of these uh, different ways, and then you can teach them about American greetings and let them try th try that out. I think the students, when they do all these kind of different greetings, they'll think it's really funny and um, have a lot of fun. You can even like French, you know, where they kiss in the air beside of the beside of each other's face. You can see that the students can be can be persuaded to to do that. And then lastly, you can have. Um, Either the students write a dialogue, or you can help uh, write some dialogues for them and have them practice uh, a dialogue from 
and practice and pretend they're from different cultures, but make them speak English. So they're role playing that, that they're from different cultures and practicing greetings from different cultures, but they will still they can still say their their uh, dialogues in English. Wow, I don't feel it's getting colder. I feel it's getting hotter and hotter. How do you guys feel? Cold, hot, warm? Huh? How do you feel? Nobody can speak English. Okay, so uh, that's good. <laughs> so uh, the last thing I want to tell you about is an activity called Flat Stanley. Have you heard of this children's book? Okay, well, anyway, let me tell you about it. Uh, what happens is there's a little boy, and uh, he walks by the bulletin board, and the bulletin board falls on him. Do you know what a bulletin board is? Yes. So the bulletin board falls on him, and he becomes flat. And he comes, he comes home, and the parents are first uh, shocked. But then they say, oh, it's, a, oh it's, it's very convenient. Now we can send you to your grandparents' um, house through the mail because we couldn't afford the uh, bus ticket before. But now we can just send you through the mail, and it's very cheap. So he goes to spend time with his grandparents for a week, and then the grandparents mail him back um, <laughs> to his parents. So you can do a similar activity. I'm not telling you to um, throw the bulletin board on your students to try to flatten them. But what I mean is you can ask, this, you can ask the students to draw a flat version of themselves. I had one, but I didn't bring it. But you just give them a big piece of paper, and they draw a person. And then they color it on both sides. And that can be the flat version of themselves, right? And then um, what they can do is they can mail it, mail those. You can make a relationship with a school in the States if you're an, a teacher. And you mail your, the flat versions of your children or your students to, to the States. And then that school will give those out to different um, students in the class. And then they will also mail you flat versions. And you give each of those to your students. And what they do is they keep the flat version of their American friend with them for one week. Now, if they have um, if they have a camera at home, they could take pictures and then print out and have the pictures developed. And then they can write on the back in English, like you know, just a sentence to tell what they're doing. When they get the picture taken, they take it with their flat friend. You know, they take the picture with their flat friend. So. So your students have to learn how to express uh, Taiwanese culture as well. If they do something, they have to learn some words, how to express some Taiwanese uh, culture, culturally related things in English. They have to say, oh, we are eating rice, you know, with our chopsticks. You know, and e even you can hold the, uh, have the paper person hold the chopsticks. And the students can write on the back, just on the back of the picture, um, you know, what they're doing. And then, you can gather everything together and mail it, mail the pictures back to the states. And the students will really, really enjoy this because they're going to learn, uh, first of all, about another culture when they get those pictures back. They're going to learn, wow, you know, this is what they're doing in the United States. And they're going to have lots of questions to ask you as well. And also, they're going to learn how to more about their own culture because they're going to be able to talk more about uh, Taiwanese culture and be able to express that in English. Don't you think that's cool? Mm. Or maybe you guys don't want to do any work for your class. <laughs> don't you think that's a neat idea? Mm. <laughs> Dead audience. <laughs> who, who actually in here wants to be an English teacher? Dou <laughs> buyang. So nobody in here wants to be an English teacher? Wow, amazing. What are you doing here? Question and answer? Is that really true? None of you want to be English teachers? None of you. Wow, I think I should just let you go then. I waste my, I waste two hours, huh? Is that really true? Nobody wants to be an English teacher here? No, nobody. Why are you doing here? Waste your time. 
Not really means no. I don't really want to do that. You know what? I don't want any of you to ever teach my children. If you don't want to be an English teacher, I don't want you in my class. I want. I don't believe so. Why? I just asked a simple question, who wants to be an English teacher? Did Mark, do you want to be an English teacher? No. No? Okay. Then I don't believe anybody wants to be an English teacher in here. Do you have any, any questions for me? I guess you better not ask me anything about teaching because it's, you don't want to be an English teacher. Yes? Yes? No, I didn't say uh, black children. I just said uh, some black people. Yeah, they don't like to be referred to as boy or girl. The oh, even adults. I already told you. Hey man, I think so. Yeah, but not boy or girl. Maybe in Taiwanese culture. Yeah? Yes? Uh, have you ever experienced any cultural vision uh, which makes you embarrassed in Taiwan? <coughs> oh, yeah, I, have, I don't know if the, I don't think this is a cultural thing. I don't know what it is, but I often have a lot of. Uh, people, when I meet them the first time, they would just say, oh, you're so handsome. <laughs> and I would say, oh, just go to the United States, you'll see much better. I mean, both male and female, and young and old, I feel it's, I feel it's very embarrassing. <laughs> because I don't know those people. Don't you feel it's kind of strange? That's because people try to, you know, build a better relationship with you at the very first beginning. They tend to say, hey, you are handsome or something. Mm, yeah, but maybe that's uh, culturally inappropriate. But I don't care. It, it doesn't matter to me, but I, the first few times I felt very strange. You know what I mean? Wow, it seems you guys are still so quiet. Yes? No, but I, I've already stayed here so long. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I feel uh, I'm so... Here, i tell you an experience that I had when I went back to the States uh, uh, last year. I hadn't touched anyone in so long when I went back to the States, my friend met me at the airport and she hugged me and I just did like this. <laughs> and I feel very shocked because I hadn't touched anybody in so long. I mean like friends, but when I'm in the States, I always hug my friends. I'm a very touchy person, but here, <laughs> but here I feel like I've become like an icicle. Because uh, it's not so usual. So I was really I'm really, because I really like to show my love <laughs> to everyone, yeah, but here, you know, it's, it's uncommon to touch the other person, yeah. So anybody want to hug me later, I will be ready. Sure. No, no, no. I, it should be know how before know why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why, why is that? Why not? Uh, 
Because I think the students, in my opinion is, I think you could probably do others, and you can do it any way you want. But for my opinion, I think uh, students will be too bored if you try to just keep talking. You need to get them to do something before they will be able to sit down and listen again. Just to keep them, uh, you know, keep them entertained. Because especially young students, you know, even you guys are very bored to listen to me. At least you will sit here. You know what I mean? But the young students, they will just get up and jump around or, you know, they cannot handle it. They will just, they will start to aggravate their neighbor or something like that. Well, I'm so sad. Nobody wants to be an English teacher. I'm going to go home and drink tonight because I'm, I'm so depressed. Yes? In Taiwan, there are many adults at like after they graduate from universities, and they are not doing the job related to what they have studied when they were in university. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if right now we selected this course simply because we are in this department, mm -hmm. like English instruction, mm -hmm. so that's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily represent that in the future when we graduate, we have to be in this mm -hmm. So why does it bother you? Because I feel you're wasting your time. I just feel heartbroken. But, uh, why we can you couldn't get into any other department? I mean... Because we got this department by grace. Yeah. By enter, um, enter college entrance exam. Yeah, but I know there's other ways to get into... Uh, school by interview and past experience? Yeah, right. Did you try? I, I got here by that. Oh. <laughs> You're even worse <laughs> than the others. <laughs> but I, I just don't understand like, why, why this kind of thing makes you feel that... It makes me feel sorry that in a Taiwanese society that uh, students cannot choose what they're interested in. And, for example, if you want to be a if you want to be an English teacher okay what if I what would you feel comfortable to take a class from a teacher who who didn't study how to be a teacher they studied how to be um, a farmer and they're going to teach you um, biology will you feel comfortable maybe not but they just say oh but I got the degree or maybe the person is working in uh, I don't know, in business, but their degree is in English education? Well, it seems there is some problem then in the society. Do, do you want, know what I mean? It seems like you will want the person uh, to offer you the service that have been trained in that service. If they haven't been trained in that service, it, well, it seems, it seems very hard. It seems like, wow, I got to study this uh, degree in something I'm not interested in, and then when I get into the job, I got to really learn fast, four years <laughs> within a few months after I get my job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, feel, I, feel, I just feel sorry. What do you want to do when you get out? I, I say get out because I feel it's like prison. You're suffering. Like, what do you want to do? I'm not sure yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, I guess, I just uh, think you know, my experience before, I've had a few teachers that you know weren't, they didn't want to be there. I can tell they don't enjoy their job at all. And, I suffer when I was in those classes. So I just don't want the future generations in Taiwan to suffer. Because if you hate your job, it will really influence your teaching mood and your teaching style. Because I came today, I'm in pretty good mood. So I enjoy myself even if you did it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think even whatever your job is, if you don't like it, then you will. You will feel so terrible when you go to work. Mm. Don't teach if you don't love it. Find some, find a really something you can really enjoy, or you can study that for your master's degree. What you're interested in. Keep going. Don't stop your education. 
but then I think it's even worse, right? Because if you want to get into a master's degree program, now, now your only choice is go to the cram school to learn the information because you can't get into the undergraduate program about the things you're interested in. So you don't have the background knowledge. So bad. I wish I can do something for you. Other questions? Don't be afraid. You can ask me anything, I don't care. My life's an open book. <laughs> what do you want to know? And somebody has to ask me a question or I won't let you go. It's a punishment. <laughs> anything. You guys are so quiet. Come on. <laughs> Twelve o'clock. Okay, you can go.